Hello everyone, we're so happy to be back doing video today because I have something so fantastic to talk to you about. We're so excited, aren't we Donna? Definitely. After a number of months, I have had the chance to develop the beginning of a very nice new line of jewelry components and you won't find them. Anywhere, anywhere else. No. Doesn't that go with Bisu Boutiques where yes. we have the good stuff? Absolutely. We really got some good stuff now, let me tell you, because what this stuff is, is made by the 1928 Jewelry Company. And we have loved that jewelry our whole yeah, life, Donna. We definitely have. Tell them how you love that jewelry, Donna. Well, it's all I bought when I was young. I didn't even want anything else. So, and I have quite a few little things that I have worn through the years and it's just it's just when something's your favorite there's nothing else that can compare to it so we're excited because we are giving you options from some of our favorite jewelry that we've ever really cared about. for sure yeah for sure and um, you know we were very young we were cleaning ladies and good we, ones. And, and, yeah. yeah we were good very we were after. good clean ladies Let me tell, we were yeah. sought after we had lines <laughs> of people waiting for us but we were actually little hillbilly girls. That's right. Living out in the country in mobile homes. And having fun, and swinging having on a porch fun, swing. Swinging on a porch swing, having a garden, chasing chickens, you name it. We were doing it. Yeah. Cats everywhere. Um, but once in a while, we'd be able to break away from there and go to the mall. Yeah, and we had good taste, though. Yeah, we had enough to buy lunch, you know, <laughs> but we couldn't buy anything. But boy, did we salivate over the 1920s, yes. didn't we? Yes, we sure we, did. We wanted it so bad. Well, now we got it, baby. Look at this. Yeah. We're full of it. Hey, we're full of it. But anyway, we've also got this line, and they are lead-free pewter castings made by the 1928 Jewelry Company out of their archive of over 35,000 antique so molds. This is so exciting. And many of the molds were used to produce their jewelry. So what I've done is I've gone through and I've started picking out some of the pieces, parts that I thought we could put together to make things that would really be interesting for us with the things we like to do. And it's just going to grow from there. And you are not going to amaze. You're not going to be. I messed that up. It's all right. It's, it's all right. You. It's in me. <laughs> You're going to be amazed at the quality and the yeah. detail in these pieces. I mean, we have to like Hold it down, don't we? No, we, we do. We want to bounce off the walls, and, and you're going to want to too once you get your hands on you this stuff. You have so many options now. Yeah, so many options. So let me just shut up and come on over here and let me share my excitement, Donna, share her excitement, and show you some of the actual pieces that are already on my website. And you can go get a few pieces and see if you don't feel the same way that we do. I'm sure they this. will. It's called Bisu by 1928. That's my name. And you'll find it right on the website. So come on over here and let's take a better look. Okay, guys. So again, this line is called Bisu by 1928. That's the legal name. There is a logo. You'll find it on the website. I'm, I'm so thrilled they even let me use their name. It's so amazing. But I want to show you how we made these finishes on the lead-free pewter so that they would look more like the old, old pieces that we always loved in the French stuff. Because it's getting harder and harder to get the French stuff. Yeah. But at 1928, they have cast quite a few pieces like that French stuff, and they can do filigree. And let me tell you what, there are very, very few companies who do cast, who can do filigree, the caliber of work that they do. It's muddy, it's not clean, the, the detail's obscured, and these pieces, it's not. It's as crisp as it would be struck in brass, and I'm going to show you how. You'll see down here along the bottom, I have a set of butterfly castings, except one is not a casting. This is the old piece right here. Now when you compare this old piece with the gingerbread piece, 
there it's not exactly the same but it's in that same league it's, this has got a little bit more black and patina on it but look how crisp the filigree is side by side it's amazing they did this in cast pewter they are masters at the art of casting lead free pewter nobody better I think you're going to be hard pressed to ever find anybody better so we have it in three finishes now this is the original old one we have it in these three finishes. We have it in the old silver. And in the butterfly, because it's so busy, it looks a little dark, but it's really a little brighter, and I'm going to show you in a minute. And then we have the gingerbread, which is really, really super close to the old French pieces. And you can darken this, too, by just getting some burnt sienna acrylic paint and a stiff brush and just paint it down into the cracks, wipe on, wipe off, and then seal with Krylon like we do. And then you can get it to looking, you know, more like this if you want. So there you've got a little bit of interactive stuff going on. You can distress this too a little bit. It's silvery colored underneath so that's what would come up. This piece is the rusted iron and it kind of took over for the rusty black finish at Bisa Boutiques but let me tell you this is so far and away better than the rusty black you're gonna love it. It too is a heavy copper base underneath this blackened which is type of uh, iron oxide over top. It's not a finish you can really do at home because the copper base over the pewter has to be fused in a professional way. So unless you know how to do that, I don't. You're not going to be able to make it at home and then have it so you can distress it and bring up the copper highlights. And to show you how that works with distressing it to bring up the copper highlights, I have a piece here that I've begun to distress and I'm going to just kind of take it off this white sheet for a minute because I don't want to make a mess on there and just kind of show you how it distresses. So just take your nail block, see if I'm on camera, probably not, but I don't want to put it on here. Okay, just take your nail block and just go over it like you would any other thing. You can use the fine steel wool too, but I find that it sometimes catches down in little crevices. So just scrub around on that. It takes a little bit longer to bring it up on the pewter than the brass. But you can see <clears throat> I'm raising patina as I go. This is very, very subtle. If you wanted it more, then you'd have to scrub around on it more. But I'm getting, I'm raising the, the highlights in it. And it's really, really beautiful. So I like to show you that. But you know what? On the... Um, pieces like this in the rusted iron the thing is is they come out of a tumbler from the professional uh, finisher and they already a lot of them have copper highlights on them and I'm going to show you a case in points so let me remove these so they don't confuse things and put the original back here because that's kind of precious and I'm going to show you this wonderful little padlock. Everybody that's seen these has just been absolutely nuts about them. I don't know if you can zero in on that, Javi, so that you can see. You actually wouldn't have to distress this. It's already got highlights on it. A lot of the rusted iron pieces have highlights already in them. And you can see the detail goes all the way around the back. All the way over the bale. Everywhere. And then you could say, well, Brenda Sue, that piece is kind of hollow. There's nothing in there. What do I do? Well, you could make yourself a big tassel out of fiber and fine chain and beads and stuff and, and glue it up there and let it hang out. And that'd be cool. But you don't have to. The company has made for this piece a little stopper piece. Because you see, if they had made this completely hollow, if they, they made it completely hollow, if they made it completely solid, you couldn't have the keyhole and be able to see through it. And it would be so heavy, it might not be comfortable to wear. So being practical, they cast it hollow. And that's another thing. Not everybody can cast hollow properly. I have seen stuff that was cast hollow that was a hot mess. This is not. This is so professional and so wonderfully done. There's even a, a little lip up in here so that you can set this little piece. I'm going to show you this little piece. The piece has... Oh, I've got dirt from that all over my hands. Oh, well. Um... The piece has, easily distracted, the piece has a little hanging hole or aglet on the one side. And this was actually created so that they could 
rack plate the pieces, which means they would put a wire through this and then dunk it into the solution on a rack. Put the rack down in, pull it up, and they could pull it off the wire. But this comes in handy because you can get a jump ring through that. So when you want to put this bottom in, you could take hold of it like this, like a little lid, and put, stick a little bead of glue down in here. I'm all on there, right, honey? And then just stick this in here. Is that cool or what? Glue that in, put a, a jump through that and hang something. Awesome. Don't like it that way? No problem. Put it on the other side. And now it'll probably fall in. No. Look at that. Is that... I mean, where are you going to get this stuff, guys? But I wanted to, I wanted to show you. Um, we have it in the rusted iron. And we have it in gingerbread inside this bag, which I should have had open. So that's kind of cool. But this is really neat. We have it in the old silver. Is that beautiful? Doesn't that look like old sterling? I'm impressed. Very, very but impressed. But we have to mention, it's not sterling. It's lead-free pewter. And it's made in the United States. All of it. And so is the finish. Nothing imported about this. It's all made here. High, high quality. Okay, but we want to show you something. Donna, do you want to tell them about this piece? Because it's one of your favorite, favorite 1928 pieces. Well, I saw this and I had to have it. Um, I wear it a lot. Yeah. What I like about it so much is to me the weight of that lock is perfect. Mm -hmm. Not too heavy, not too light. And no matter what side it's flipped on, it always looks nice. That's important to me. I love it when things look nice on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, it's just my, one of my favorite things. You know? Mm -hmm. So. And it comes on this beautiful heavy braided chain I don't even know where to get it it is they do that's all that chain. matters yeah. <laughs> I don't have any to sell you and it has a beautiful dumbbell clasp on it uh, toggle on the front it's very very attractive this is about a 30 inch chain you want to show your earrings if you want me too? to yeah I love these here's your earrings here's too. a pair of earrings that I wear a lot because they go with so many uh -huh, things yeah. I want to build a I'll just hold it so yeah. that you can see the detail. But you can see how beautiful yeah. their finish is. Everything this, goes with This the is from the Antiquities Couture section at 1928.com, and you can buy it there. Or you can come to bcboutiques.com and buy the padlock, which is pretty close. It's very close. It's pretty close. Not exactly, but both are really good high-end finishes. And... You can get one, and you can put your own kind of chain, your own kind of pant. You can do whatever you're hanging off of a, a, a charm bracelet, heavy charm, heavy charm bracelet with chain, whatever. Do what you want with it. Um, but this is one of the more expensive pieces from 1928, and this is a more expensive piece in our line, but it's very, very affordable. Very. And it's, it's worth it for what it uh, is. It you is don't... totally worth it because there's mm -hmm. nothing like this out there. You will find nothing, nada. Even if someone tried to copy it, it would not no. be as good. There's no way because of the expertise that the 1928 company has. And I'm just so thrilled to work with them. So, Dawn, maybe you want to take I'll put that, that back. back on. And again, they all have the little lip. They come in a set. You get you get the tops and you get the bottoms. And Shelly is working on getting. I know the rusted iron. Everything we have in rusted iron, except for a couple pieces, is on. BisaBoutiques.com, and the padlock and silver is on. The gingerbread isn't yet because I have a little bit of paperwork to do with it yet, but you know it's going to be there in a couple days, all of it. And we're going to have raw too, so you can do stuff with that. And I'll show you something about that later. But let me take this out of the road. So much to do and so little time, but it's just amazing. I love this piece too, and it's a like a filigree heart, and it's it's got no back and. This is a good thing, because if it did, it might have a little too much weight. Not only that, you know how we like to cage and work with wire and tiny beads and little parts and stuff? This would be a perfect caging base, wouldn't it, Donna? It would. If you took and just went around in the middle a little bit. Yeah. When I was sorting these things, I couldn't help because it's, it's just inspiring, all these things. But I would see something, and I would set it on top of that. And you'd be surprised all the different looks you can have with just layering a piece on top of mm -hmm. it that's small. 
Yeah, a and, and you don't have to layer another piece of pewter on it. You could have, you have a little stray stamping or stone mm -hmm. or whatever, or you could put a little mount on that. He, in fact, he probably has a mold of this same thing with a mount on it he on bed. Does. You know, but this is in the rusted iron. It is on the website right now. So if you want to go get one, you can. Look for the Bisu by 1920 heading and then just go down through the drop down box. Um, oh, here's another cool thing I wanted to show you about the lock before I forgot. People were asking, are we going to be able to do swelling it on this? Can we do patinas on this stuff? Yeah. You sure can. How about that? Why does that look old? Yeah, it looks like you we're did a good job. in the bottom of the ocean for yeah. who knows how long. It was this to begin with. How did you do that? That is simply Tiffany Green Swelligant Patina. No metal coating, no nada, because the iron oxide on top copper underneath, it will react with that patina only, so you don't need to metal coat it. We're going to have another whole video on this. There is a little bit of a learning curve to get the bloom to come up, but it is not hard. Anyone can do it. So we'll get to that later, but the answer is yes, 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 yes. You're going to be able to use swell again on this. I don't know if it's going to work on the silver, but it does work on rusted iron. It does work on gingerbread, and here is proof of that. This is gingerbread. This is a, an earring or pendant drop that we have on the site. And to show you what it looks like originally, um, I have it on this necklace. It looks like that. Okay. Gingerbread's this color. So look, it took that patina beautifully. And I've distressed it a little bit to cut that back. And I might do a little bit more, then I'll seal it. But yeah, you're going to be able to use swell again. And there's the proof. Yay. Beautiful. Worry no more. No mas. No preocupes mas. Okay. So let's come back here and get into a few other things. I want to show you these wonderful little miniatures that they have for charms. First of all, this is the Eiffel Tower. We have it in gingerbread and we have it in silver. Can you, see, can you get that, Javi? Because it's an awful lot of detail and it's really small. But these little charms are so dimensional that look, I can set that up just like... It even leans. But <laughs> the Eiffel Tower is not supposed to lean. It's probably my irregular crooked mat. No. Uh, that one doesn't. No. They don't. That leaning tower of peace. We'll have to know. have, that, a, we'll have to make of. a leaning tower of peace. That one. was an ADD. I couldn't keep it yeah. up. Quiet. But these also have a little bit of highlights in them already. You can see the copper flying out when you look at them. And this oh, is so the sweet. perfume atomizer. And everybody is over the moon for this. I wonder if this was really a good idea. Let's put it on the other it side. It was, I'm sure. Um, it's got so much detail. I don't know if you can capture it, but if you go on the website, we have a really nice exploded picture there. And if you mouse over the picture too, it will zoom in and make it larger. And you can see the detail on this is unbelievable. One lady got one, and she took it immediately and put it in her little tiny dollhouse because she does miniatures. And it was just the right scale. It looked perfect Aww. in there. But look at this again. It stands up on its own. So we're going to be making some marvelous charm bracelets. Exactly. I just can't wait to get them all the mixed metals together and you know vary it. It just it's fascinating. I grew up around and I had a little charm bracelet when I was mm -hmm. a girl, and I'd love to make another one. Yeah. So you're going to have all kinds of good stuff to to do that with. Um, oh, slid. Okay. Another thing is this mount. I love this mount. And Donna was expressing um, some opinions about why these mounts are so good to use. Well, you know, I was we were just talking and I told her one of the reasons I was so excited about this line was because there's often times when I made jewelry that I thought, boy, it would be nice to have a mount with more weight. It would just make it seem, you know, it would hang a little bit nicer. It would be seem, well, it would be a little bit more quality to it. But I'm thrilled with the mounts that she has because of this, the, the weight that she has mm -hmm. and the detail and a lot of them, no matter what side it on, yeah. it never looks, you know, it always yeah. looks finished. And we're going to have a whole lot more because Mr. Bernie, bless his heart, was looking all week and sending me one picture after another out of the castings library and the archive, which I have, I have 
uh, a catalog type thing myself on my computer, but he was sending me close-ups, trying to find me just the right mouse as I was selling it, telling him, Mel, we need, we need mouse for these people. We need my boy. He was after it, and so we are going to have a whole lot. You just got to love him. Wonderful. Oh, yeah, you do. You just got to love him. But anyway, to show you, um, here's another mount. This one's sideways. I made this piece of jewelry. And um, the funny story about this is, is that I was up in Dillard's looking for a dress, and the clerk was helping me find stuff. And I had this on, and she goes, oh, I love that necklace. Is that 1928? Oh, boy. But, of course it isn't, because I made it, but it's mostly their parts, so it had that look. Mm -hmm. And he's going to get us this horizontal mount. Oh, boy, just that's gotten so into much some fuzzy stuff. That. I don't know what happened. Anyway, I'll clean that up later. But I, I wear this a lot. I love it. So I like the idea of the horizontal mount because you we could need both. You and this mm -hmm. this one has a back. No, oh, that's what I love. And you know, I don't know if you can see it, but there's this signature swirly type stuff going on here with these 1928 pieces. Um, that one doesn't have it. Oh my goodness! I do bring one sound didn't have it. Well, that one has it. One you have. Yeah, this one has it a lot. Most of the pieces that you'll get in the 1928 line, Bisu by 1928, because it is kind of my line too. Um, they have this signature swirl pattern, and this is one way, guys. If you collect old jewelry, a lot of the 1928 wasn't signed with a signature pad. But if you flip it over and you look on the back and you see this exact swirl type pattern, it's the identifier. And I'm so happy to still have the identifier in my jewelry that I've had plated it with my proprietary finishes because I just like to have their mark on it because people know that it's quality and I'm happy to tell the world that they made this for me. It's a wonderful thing. It's a new venture we're doing together and we're so excited, all of us. But anyway to show you just how nicely this comes out I made this for my mom and I'm going to be sending it to her soon and I was going to send it to her last week but then we we had actually made a trial run of this video and we had to redo it so anyway I saved it so mom you'll get this later but it's on like a 30 inch and this is so nicely weighted it's going to hang it's not going to go all crookedy on her it's going to yeah. hang just in the right place you know, for her. Here's another one that I set with a gorgeous, gorgeous vintage stone. Shelly is working hard to get these stones on the site. They are vintage German glass. They're very thick, sit up really high, very, very rare. We have a finite amount of them, and then they are gone to the world. Who knows? Whoever will have them again. They are, yeah, yeah but, but see, they look so nice in this mount. And the mount should be up today, too. And also this blue willow cameo, we do have quite a few of these. We can get more, and so don't worry about it. We have them, but at the same time, they will run out eventually, and I don't believe anybody's making them anymore. So when you see them on our site, if you want to go ahead and get grabby, it's okay. Because we can get more for now, and then you can hoard them, which is probably a good thing. Okay, let me take this away. Another thing I wanted to... Oh, here it is with a pretty lady and the rusted iron finish weighted. I just want to say how I think that particular um, mount, it looks good, really good and outstanding in every in every finish. It just is one of those pieces. Yeah, it does. It's one that you can use so many ways. And don't forget guys, you can do your inks, you can distress them, you can do your paints, you can do patina on the gingerbread and also the rusted iron. It comes out great. So you can change it up and you can take this look which looks pretty fine already, but you can make it look even finer with your own designer touch. And that's what's so wonderful because no company ever releases the parts that they have used to make their jewelry over the years. No company does this. But now select pieces are being released so that you designers at home can use them, put your own spin on them, and have something of such amazing quality and history because as we go along and we add more here I can ask uh, Mr. Bernie hey uh, do you remember when you used this in the line if it's not currently being used plus I have about 30 years of their catalogs and I read them religiously so mm -hmm. I'm getting acquainted a little bit more with you know when this was in the line and when it wasn't so um, Goodness knows we might re we might write a book on it one day. Wouldn't that be fun? Oh, it would be. That would be so fun. 
he's at a place in his journey he should have a book written about what he's done. Okay, there's these little mounts too, which I've set with a pretty vintage stone. That's in the rustered iron. We have it in the other finishes as well. Donna really likes these. These little roses. They just came in in the second shipment. And uh, I even have a necklace made of this. And you can see in the in the um, rusty iron, it's got, you know, some highlights coming out already. You know, so you can add more by uh, distressing or not. Flip one over, right? Yeah, and they have a pattern on the back of a rose. So it's, they just don't leave stuff unfinished. A lot of times, um, things that are made almost like as an afterthought and just shoved out there in the market, they have this finish. They, it's not even a finish on the back. It just looks like someone scraped it with a knife. Have yeah, you ever seen those? I have, and it's you know it's wasted an opportunity. Yeah, because they could have molded a cute pattern in there, and more people would have wanted it. They might have had to charge a little bit more, but good stuff does cost a little bit more. And guess what? People want to buy good stuff. They don't want to buy stuff that's full of lead. They don't want to buy stuff that's poorly plated. It's going to break through. They don't want to buy stuff that doesn't have detail. This stuff has amazing, amazing detail. I like the next earrings. Yeah. The things you make oh, you want to show the earrings? I, yeah. Oh, these are so fabulous. In fact, I'm going to I have to take my earring out because I'm wearing, I wear these all the time. This. Look what you can do. Yeah. I just distressed it a little bit and I hung a spectra bead on the bottom. And you can mix the metals a little bit because the copper highlights are coming out on it somewhat. So I used a copper ear wire and a copper colored bead and I even used a copper jump. Eventually, we're going to have seamless, all across the board, rusted iron. We're going to have rusted iron chain. We're going to have rusted iron jump rings, clasp everything because I'm able to do it. In fact, we have rusted iron brass coming out too, which I'll show you in a minute. In fact, some is on the site already. So you can just do that. But here's the, here's the deal, guys. Beyond that, this piece is so useful. You can do it this way. Look at that. That's a beaded edge bezel, 13 millimeter. That's a bezel. You can do resin down there. You could do tissue decoupage down in there. A tissue, tissue decoupage on rusted iron is going to be... be awesome. I can't wait to do the video on that because you guys are just going to be crazy for that. You're going to love that. So that's another good piece. Here's another good piece I like. has the crown on it. But see, it's not just one-sided. I did distress this a little bit. Here's Look. undistressed. It's it like a checker. Again. Reminds me of a checker. Maybe they made it from a checker. I don't know. It's kind of small for that. But it reminds me of a checker, of a checker set. You know, that would be great for, like, I have one one uh, sterling silver bracelet. And they, a lot of times they'll put one heavy piece on mm -hmm. it as an accent. That would be great. Yeah. Any of the finishes. So one heavy piece, yeah. One piece, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you've got, you've got it just mm -hmm. right. Here's another little piece I like. And I've got a, a wonderful vintage cab in there that we have precious few of. I think Shell's put them in sets of six on Etsy. And they aren't inexpensive as well. They should not be because they're old West German. They're not made anymore and they're made by hand. These are lamp work glass. But I kept a few for me and I set it in this beautiful little beaded edge mount. And you could maybe, um, like I don't have enough bracelets on, right? Um, but you could like put it here and put... Uh, bead and link chain around the edges and then just put your hook here your clasp and let some beads hang down. I love that look. I do too and you know that piece is so versatile you can make a whole line out of it. Yeah you really could. Mm -hmm. You really could. We get smaller versions of this and make earrings. Yeah. You could put a, a tassel or a charm string on the end I and see a tassel. pretty bail yeah. here and and I, whenever I see a, a bezel like this, mm -hmm. that's what I always think. Yeah. And nothing with do? these bezels. You know what we do sometimes with the brass ones? We take them and we collage them. We do assemblage in them. You don't have to put a stone in it. Yeah. You can use your brass pieces and your found item pieces and, and do an assemblage in them. And it'll also look awesome. And it will look unique, done your way, which is great. One last thing I want to show you before I show you a little bit more of the rusted iron brass, which is a different animal altogether. This is the most crazy, unique, awesome thing. But look at it. Can you tell what it is? If you've been to my site already, you know. But, I mean, that just looks like a 
What? Thing with big three big holes in it. Well, I've seen it before, so yeah, you, I have an advantage. You, yeah, but it's hard to know what that's for. Yeah, so you don't. I mean, I would wonder, but I discovered that here we have it in the gingerbread. You set it with three 18 by 13 cameo stones or mounts. Remember, I just took three of these Limoges ladies that we just put on the website and I stuck it on a eye pin. And if you don't fasten it down too hard you can it'll spin making it unique you can wire through it you can do amazing things with this so here it is in that shade and then I did one with these cornelian color Beautiful. I didn't do a great glue job on this I did it too quick but you know pardon the bad glue job but we couldn't tell. It's so pretty. So this is this. But I got one more thing I gotta show you. Let me take my glasses off. I am wearing a piece. This is my favorite, favorite piece at the time of 1928 jewelry, and it's from the Antiquities Couture collection, and that's my favorite line that they have. I love wearing that piece. This as well. piece is oh, so God. crazy. It's so wonderful. But it's got this hand piece, which we're going to get some pieces like this too for the line. So you're going to be able to work with hands and stuff. But you see this this thing here in the middle? What do you suppose that is? Hmm. <laughs> this. In their line, they actually have several things that employ this they piece. They do. I was, I was thinking I wish I would have yeah, brought another yeah. piece I have. But, that's, but it's we'll so unique. And video. isn't it so wonderful? that they release it that they let us use it even though it's still in play in their lines but we've got my finishes on them and that's what makes it different you know mm -hmm. they have theirs they have this beautiful gold on it which i'm to die for but we aren't going to have gold for a while i don't think mostly we're going to concentrate on the tumbled silver which by the way the silver is a, almost an ex exact match for silverware silver plate. So again, you have seamless. Mm -hmm. Everything will go together. You're not gonna have to worry. Oh no, what do I put with this? I don't have anything to go with it. It's yeah, gonna beautiful work. Beautiful silver. Touch. It's gonna work fine. Beautiful. So move that away. I showed you the padlock with the swelling it. I showed you the earring drops. But what I didn't show you is we did have some of the rusted, rusted iron brass come in. Because there's always going to be a need for brass. This is not made by the 1928 Jewelry Company, but it will go with this line. And to give you an idea, this is what it looks like. This is replacing the rusty brass. And it's so rich and so dark and so amazing. And I'm going to take, it's got a little bit of distressing on it already, but I'm going to take and do this one and let this come up. And when you see the highlights come up on this, you guys are going to say, I don't miss Rusty Black at all. Because some are kind of crying the blues a little bit because they've come to rely on that finish. And it's kind of hard when you discontinue something that people like and they're in the middle of using it. But I've got something similar that is way better. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, it is beautiful. beautiful. And it is a seamless match to Rusted Iron Pewter. And that's not something that I've easily been able to do. Right. I got some chain plated just to see how it go. Totally, totally matched all the way down the line. So we're going to be able to have a seamless matching line. Another thing that I did is I tested the rusted iron brass with swelligant. So I distressed this first. And then I coated it with the Tiffany Green swelligant. Didn't need a metal coat because there's enough metal in the top of this already. And look at how that came out. Is that not gorgeous? So no worries, guys. With the rusted iron brass, you're still going to be able to use swell again. And you're going to have better looking patina than ever. So it's it looks rich. all awesome. It's all awesome, awesome stuff. So I don't have much else to tell you right now today about this line. Except you better come on over and just, let me clean this off. Just grab a few pieces, you know. Try it out. Take, get it home and see what you think. Do a few things with Show me what you're doing. And another thing that goes good with this rusted iron for now is this wonderful um, black and gold two-tone, uh, it's fighting me, 
two-tone two uh, link chain. We yeah. have lots of this. You know, Brenda, that well, looks actually so much better in person than the photo. I know. And I mean, I bad. saw it when we t did the yeah. trial video last week, and it, <clears throat> it looked good. Yeah. But it's in so person, beautiful. it's like, give me that. Yeah. And the wonderful thing about it is it's not expensive at all. It costs a lot less than one of our other chains. This I would one. be tempted to buy something just because that chain's on it. Yeah. That's how much I like yeah. the chain. Yeah. It's just really good stuff. So anyway, to just get everything back, the dimensional terms. There's way more than this, guys. This is not all of it. And it's really, you know, that song, We've Only Just Begun, you know? We've Only Just Begun. It's We've fun. only Boy, just begun with this. We're going to have so, so many more pieces to this. A few pieces may come and go as we experiment with it. Um, but we're just going to have so much amazing stuff for you to play with. So come on over. See what we've got up so far. Keep watching the site over the next few days. I know we're at the holiday right now. But, you know, get a break. Come on over and see what, what we got done. And, um... Just have some fun. Get a few pieces and play with it. I'll be back next week. Probably going to do a Swallowgate video for you using this product. That'll so be good. you can look forward to that. Probably we're going to have video every week now because there's so many things that we can do with these products. Some of the videos may be very short. I may take one piece and say, okay, this is what you do with this one piece. Or I may have a whole technique deal going on. But anyway, enough of me right now. This is Bisu by 1928. Thank you very much to everyone, all my friends, the wonderful people of the 1928 Jewelry Company who have given me so much leash oh boy, to, to do things I never dreamed I would do. And that's the thing I wanted to tell you guys, too, in, in parting today. You know, a lot of us work really, really hard to try and get somewhere and to try and to catch our dream. And I've been working at it for nearly 30 years. I've had some success. I've had some dismal failures. But I never, ever quit. And if you knew the story of 1928, the man started with no knowledge of making jewelry and a few good ideas and a whole lot of drive. And he wouldn't quit. And look what happened. And now we get to use this stuff so that we can take our work to the next level. Now I get to have this privilege so that I can come to the next level. It's win, 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 win all the way down the line. So keep positive. We're going into a new year any minute. Thanks to everybody over there at 1928. Again, I said that again for all your support and, and all the things that you've done to, to let me try to make this great for you. And let's just see what happens now, guys. So. Have a great day, and thanks for stopping in. We really appreciate you all.